Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us quickly look at the levels of consumers before we go ahead and talk about the transfer of energy or the energy flow between various organisms. So the level will start with the producer which are the green plants. So producers are those which produce the food that is they can prepare their own food and they are not dependent on any other organisms for their food. So they directly utilize the solar energy and prepare food for themselves as well as other organisms of the ecosystem. So in terrestrial ecosystems, green plants are the producers and in aquatic ecosystems, we have algae and phytoplanktons which also act as producers. The next level are primary consumers. So these primary consumers are those which directly feed on green plants. So primary consumers are also known as herbivores. So primary consumers are also called as herbivores. Next is example would be grasshopper. So here you can see these are the producers. Then you have the grasshopper which is a herbivore. And then the next will be secondary consumer that is those organisms which feed on primary consumers. So here you can see this is a carnivore. So this carnivore is also termed as now carnivores can also be primary carnivore or secondary carnivore depending upon which organism it is feeding upon. So here in this case you can see the frog feeds upon the herbivore. So the frog is a primary carnivore in this case. Now this frog in turn is eaten up by the tertiary consumer. So what is the tertiary consumer? That is the snake. So this consumer will feed on the secondary consumer. And these are also carnivores because this is also feeding on another animal. But this is a secondary carnivore. So basically this is herbivore. This is primary carnivore. This is secondary carnivore. Right? For example, the snake here is a tertiary consumer. Quaternary consumer organisms which feed on tertiary consumer. Now let us suppose this snake is again eaten by this organism that is a hawk. So this hawk is again another carnivore because it feeds on another animal. But in this case it is a tertiary carnivore or it is a quaternary consumer. So when you talk about carnivores, so the primary level will start from the first carnivore. But when you talk about consumer, the first level will start from the herbivore because herbivore is also a consumer. So this is how the level will keep on increasing. So it is something like this. You start with the producer at the base. Above the producer, you have the primary consumer, Above this, you will have the secondary consumer. Above this, you will have the tertiary consumer and so on. So this is how the level of consumer will uh, keep on changing. And based on this level of consumer, we will see that how energy flows from one level of consumer to another level of consumer. So finally comes the decomposer. So these were all the consumers. So first lab, first type was the producer. Next was all the consumers. And finally the decomposers like bacteria and fungi which feed on the dead plants or animals. So the dead producers or consumers are eaten up by the decomposers. So now one interesting question here is we looked at the entire level of consumer. Now where does the omnivores fall? So we saw the herbivores, we saw the carnivores. What, what about the omnivores? Because omnivores are those organisms which feed on both plants and animals. So what will be there? Will they be primary consumer, secondary consumer or tertiary consumer? Well that completely depends on what are they eating. So if the, if they feed only on plants, in that case they will be primary consumers. So if the omnivores are feeding on plants, in that case they will be primary consumer. If they feed on other animals, depending on which animal it is feeding upon, it can be a secondary consumer or a tertiary consumer. So it completely depends on what exactly is the omnivorous feeding on. Depending on that, it can be a primary consumer or secondary or tertiary consumer. 
So we concluded that living organisms depend on each other for their food. So it is not only the living organisms on which they depend upon, they also depend upon the abiotic components for their other needs. For example, for drinking, they depend on water, for breathing, they depend on air. So they not only depend on the living organisms, but also on the non-living organisms. And this interaction is what we study in ecosystem. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.